<laughs> Did I say I was going to not use the shitty computer audio for the podcast shout out? Sorry, guys. It's just really convenient in post-production to not have to go back to the studio. Anyway, our podcast shout out for this week is the Trial by Error variety show hosted by Jazz Rab. Now, you might recognize this podcast. It is the podcast that Collateral Cinema's very own Bo Maddox started out on. And it's uh, another podcast that's within our region network. Also, Chaz has been on the Collateral Cinema Movie Podcast on a couple occasions. And uh, he's a really fun guy to hang out with. Now, on the Trial by Error variety show podcast that he hosts, he interviews several uh, indie music performers. And uh, it's just really interesting. You ought to give it a shot. Um, You can find that podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Go give them a listen. They're active on social media as well. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, the whole spiel. One more thing. During this podcast, every single time I mentioned Lego Harry Potter years 5 through 7, I accidentally said years 5 through 8. I was tired. I didn't pay attention to what I was saying. I am an avid Harry Potter fan, believe me. I know there are seven books. I know that even though there are eight movies, it represents seven years. And I know the magical significance of the number seven in the mythos of the Harry Potter or wizarding world. So uh, just excuse that error. I think I say it every single time I bring up the title. So I'm honestly surprised I made that mistake myself. Anywho, that being said, on with the show. I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Dakota Chancellor. And we We are are Collateral Collateral Gaming. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. We are recording straight from somewhere in South Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so smoke it if you've got it. My name is Ashley Chancellor. Fun fact, I'm something of a Bandera County celebrity, uh, a Lake Hills legend, if you will. Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, he, He neglects to mention that it's through Facebook. I'm a Facebook celebrity, exactly. I'm a <laughs> social media influencer now. In our all, in our own way, I guess we are, Robert. But uh, Robert's not hooked up to a mic, so none of y'all even heard what Robert said. He said, <laughs> "In a way, we all are." And so I said, "Yeah, in a way, in a way, we are." Yeah, get your um, headset on, Bo. Wait, not Bo. Robert, where's Bo? Uh, Robert, speak into the goddamn microphone. I can't. Come on. I can't. So I'm joined here today by my brother Dakota Chancellor. He's the other real co-host. Bo and Robert, you know, they don't put in the effort to actually play yeah, the games. We're, so we're fairly, I'm not awarding them the official status of co-host yet, not unless they're actually playing the games. I, but uh, they're our audience, I guess. I do not accept the responsibility. Is that what you call this? I, I don't know what to call you guys. You just guys, I just your voices are supporting us. They're hanging out, but I call it bullshit. Is what I call it. Bullshit. I call it collateral summoning the sideliners, uh, crashing collateral gaming. Oh, the backup dancers. That's what well, they are. Backup the dancers. backup dancers. Backup dancers for Insync and Nelly. I'll take it. All right. Well, guys, enough bullshit. Let's cut straight to the meat. Or, or I guess if you're Bo, a sad vegan patty. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, that vegan patty is way better than any type of meat that you could ever eat. Oh. Okay, um, I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> so, all right. Well, guys, we are in for a treat today. We've got an awesome game to talk about. Maybe something a little underrated among, I don't know, the hardcore gamer community. But before we go into that, we've got a brand new segment on the show. It's called Collateral Gaming News. And uh, in it, we're going to talk about the news in the world of gaming. Just very, very briefly, you know, less than 30 seconds. I don't know. It's just yeah. this thing. 
Sounds good to me. So yeah, guys, um, Borderlands 3, still happening. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11, still doesn't have Shaggy. Still doesn't have Shaggy. And that's it for Collateral Gaming News today. The end. <laughs> the end. All right. Uh, a couple other things I do want to go over, too. As I explained in our previous episode, which was just a bullshit extras episode, so maybe not everyone listened to it. I don't know. We are switching to a monthly format. Now, what this is going to mean is that we're going to be able to produce better, higher quality content for you because we'll have more time to play the games themselves. Right. And and that's really what we needed between school and work and everything. We just don't have enough time to play the games. And so uh, we decided with the monthly format, we're going to be able to do that for y'all. However, every two weeks, we may still try to add in uh, indie game reviews and bonus episodes. Yeah, we're still working on one now. Uh, we Happy Few. Yeah. So that that should be out sooner or later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be our next indie game review is We Happy Few, and we should be posting that next two weeks. Of course, we'll have time to talk about what's upcoming. You guys can expect uh, just a couple more numbered episodes after this, and that concludes the end of Season 1. Uh, we'll be ending around the same time as Collateral Cinema. Uh, I do just want to have a throw out a heads up. Uh, I'm having a baby. Uh, it's <laughs> June 22nd. Well, I'm not having a baby. You know, my wife is. Are you sure you're not pregnant? You I'm not pregnant. <laughs> um, yeah, my fiance, who is soon to be my wife, she's having a baby. Uh, as I've stated before on this podcast and on Collateral Cinema. So I'm taking a complete, like, at least a month off from everything. Work, podcasting. Um, you know, we can keep ourselves afloat for a little while, but, uh, just to spend time with my baby. Now that pertains to this podcast because she's literally due next month. So yeah, she, at any point, you know, yeah. I have the schedule set out to where our season one ends right when the baby's supposed to come the due date. But if things happen sooner than that, we'll have to put it on hiatus and then conclude season one later. But well, c- congratulations, man. I mean, shit. Yeah. Thanks, bro. I mean, it's a big I mean, deal. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I just I just want to do a heads up. Um, so there may be that possible mid-season hiatus. Otherwise, expect season one to conclude around the same time as Collateral Cinema. And season two will start at the same time as Collateral Cinema. What, in September, right, Bo? Um, I think maybe October. October? Yeah, that might be a better time, October. I think. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. when we started this last season with Collateral Cinema. Anyway. What game are we doing today, Dakota? We are doing Lego Harry Potter, uh, as chosen by our poll that we put up on Instagram that nobody would have wore. Nobody. <laughs> Actually, we had to decide because it wasn't decided by poll. In fact, uh, the game we're doing specifically is uh, Lego Harry Potter Collection, which Correct. is the remaster collection of Lego Harry Potter years one through four and Lego Harry Potter years five through eight, which were two separate games released at separate times. So this allows us to play both games and it make it a lot easier for us to talk about the series as a whole. Exactly, exactly. And we'll, we'll talk about Lego games as well and, you know, let you know why exactly you should be even listening to this shit. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I mean, it, they're a lot of fun, the Lego games. Um, now, we've been playing these ever since, like, the very first Lego Star Wars came out. Oh, yeah, we always have. I mean... We we've played. I've played many of them myself. I I think I played. There's a Pirates of the Caribbean one. Yeah. Uh, you said there was a Lord of the Rings one, which the I Lord haven't of the Rings seen. that came out. See, we haven't played them much, you know, recently. Right. But when we were kids, you know, that was a major thing for us. It was and, huge. And I don't know if within the hardcore gamer community, these are as. I mean, they're known, but I don't know how many people are are really into these. But I always had such a fun time with the the charming gameplay and the. The light puzzle solving, you know, it, just letting go. And, and, yeah, it's a kid's game, but at the same time, you can just mindlessly play. But exactly. also not mindlessly because, you you know, there's a little bit of intelligence into it. There is. There's thought. You have to, you know, you, you unlock things that throughout the game you have to go back in the game to go do. Like, that's one of the most fun things about the game has got to be that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of intelligent thought here. It's an intelligently written game. Uh, game series and whole as a whole, uh, the whole franchise, each series. You know, you've got Lego Star Wars, uh, Lego Indiana Jones, Lego Batman, Lego Harry Potter, and Harry Potter, especially to me, was a lot of fun. But a lot of those series, you know, are favorite series of mine. And so, in, in many ways, the Lego games sometimes may represent the best 
game adaptation of a certain franchise. I mean, right. I certainly think the Lego Harry Potter games may be the best Harry Potter games. Yeah, I, I would totally believe that. I mean, I personally am okay with the Harry Potter game. And we'll talk about that later uh, in another episode, actually. But um, I thought those were kind of medio- mediocre, in my opinion. But I actually liked the Lego Harry Potter games. Like, it was it was fun. It was enjoyable. I mean, playing it these last few days have been just, you know, it's, I've been excited to play it. Yeah, and there's a few things that the Lego games really do right. And one of those is cooperative play. It's one of the few games I know where you can seamlessly drop in and out yeah. at any time, the second player, you know. And uh, it, it works as a single player game. It works even better as a multiplayer game. And it's the same experience either way, sort of. You know, it's the same it's the same game, but a different experience, I should say. Right. And there's like to elaborate on that, there's usually puzzles in the game, like two player puzzles. And if you drop out, there's just one character doing it, but the other character that's always there will automatically do it. Like I have CPU, you know, instead of you actually doing it with your your uh partner next to you. Right. And if you're playing solo, you'll have to switch to other characters to right. take advantage of each unique ability uh, that each character type has. Uh, especially in Lego Harry Potter, you have uh, certain wizards that, beyond using their main spells, also have like extra abilities. Right. Uh, we'll go more into like Lego Harry Potter in a little bit, the gameplay of that. But the Lego games usually revolve around different uh, special abilities. And if you're playing cooperatively, well, then you each know your own strengths and you can play to them. And there's usually a, another character in the party who you can switch to as well. Right. More than. Um, they do that so that even in multiplayer games, you can still have that aspect of switching to another character to use their ability. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and some of them are really zany. And, some of the, and there's a lot of attention paid to the source material. Definitely. I've noticed. Even, you know, like with this one, references to the books. And to the universe outside of the movies, which they're specifically based on, uh, I noticed the same attention to detail in regards to uh, Star Wars, given you know just the movies. Yeah, they, they they really paid attention. These people who made these games, I mean, it's made for kids, and yet whoever made this, they're they're fans of the original material, and and, and it really shows through with the attention to detail. Beyond that, uh, there's also at least in the early games and the ones that are. Spe- Specifically, the ones that are based on movies, um, you have these like charming reenactments of of scenes from the film. Because, well, at least within the first part of the series, when the the games came out before before we kind of stopped playing, right? It was always no dialogue, no dialogue ever, and that was actually a strength. Some of the more modern games now feature dialogue, and a lot of it, if it's based on a movie, it'll feature like direct clips from the movie, which is okay. But then. You know, on the ones that are not based on movies, what used to be, you know, chiming, quirky, innovative ways of reenacting a scene without using any dialogue and yet conveying the point all the same. Right. Is kind of replaced by like bad kid jokes. Exactly. It's not even enjoyable, really. No. It kind of takes away from the the fact that there was no dialogue because you didn't need it. Usually just grunts and moans and that was it. Yeah. And. I played a little bit of Lego Marvel Super Heroes, and I do want to get into that series in particular later because I love Marvel, and it would be really cool to see a combination of the MCU and and comic book characters. Uh, But the one thing that kind of bothered me with that one was that was was the bad humor and the very childish humor, and it just it it was kind of lost on me. I felt a little isolated um from that community i felt distant from it because you know i'm an older more mature gamer you know i don't know right. i don't usually feel that way i'll play kid games to no end but i don't know it, it, it just kind of bugged me so i i really appreciate the approach they took in the beginning because there's a reason they didn't use dialogue you know yeah i get what you're saying and i don't think it had anything to do with licensing i think that was just the idea uh, also the way they can truncate a story and and get all the main plot points in, and you can basically understand what's going on. Although better if you've already you know haven't seen that movie. So I always really appreciated the way they reenacted uh, a lot of movie scenes, and then also the gameplay itself. And we went into that a little bit, you know, with the cooperative play, but also just the using specific abilities unique to each character. Uh, the puzzle solving, 
and, and also really fun aspects because the entire game is made out of Legos and you play as the little Lego minifigures. Right. And it's like you mentioned before with the reenactments. There's like you'll see the when players when Lego players die, they just like break apart because it's such a physical like you got to think about it that way because that's all it is. Yeah. It's just Lego breaking apart. <laughs> and they respawn with no penalties. No penalties at all. Just which, you lose a couple of studs. Which you can collect as you die. Yeah, which encourages just, you know, more casual, less stressing fun, you know? Right. And sometimes you need that. So when I said mindless earlier, it's not mindless. I mean, it does require some some thought to, to solve the puzzles. Not like Zelda level. No, But, right. you know, uh, a decent amount, especially cooperating with the other player. But it's also kind of a kickback game that's very non-stressful, you know, sort of like playing mario except even mario can get fucking stressful so i have been so stressed over mario before it's ridiculous especially the older games honestly yeah the older games are the worst oh yeah video games used to be harder man honestly super mario bros 3 short of the uh, occasional gym like you know dark souls right of course know. but yeah super mario brothers 3 the original you know the original, the original legend of, of zelda all that i have to say is what do y'all know about battle toads battle, battle toads. toads battle toads i've never played that battle toads. that is insanely difficult it some of the you think of like a evil frogger oh yeah <laughs> it's it's pretty much teenage mutant ninja turtles but with frogs pretty much that's what it is but it's it's a difficult game though that sounds terrifying, to be honest with you. As difficult as Zelda 2? Uh, I don't know, but I'm, mm, I'm terrified. Maybe a little. I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, you know, I guess we're showing our age here because right. we're, we won't recognize a lot of the more obscure reference to older games that were kind of before our time. Dakota and I are fairly young. Well, yeah, right. But, like, even me, the games that I played were the same games that you played. Yeah. So I can still at least like level with the games of your time. Right. And that's why we're running this podcast. Right. Not these old farts. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm just kidding. Bo and Robert are millennials like us, technically. Just older millennials, I guess. I guess so. Very much so. Um. So, yeah, the Lego yeah, games. That's something that I sorry guess... Sorry to cut you off, but we're the cool millennials. You're the cool millennials? But, yeah. I'm Lego, just Lego Harry out. Potter. Bad. Lego Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. We're cutting that we're out. We're the ones because... that I grew up with Tales from the Crypt. Sorry. Tales from the Crypt? <laughs> this motherfucker. So we're cooler. Sorry. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, the Lego games, that's something that Dakota and I are familiar with growing up. That's, you know, something that's very, very nostalgic for us. And um, I like a lot of the other games we've made on this podcast. But believe me, we're going to challenge ourselves. We're going to do games we've never played before. We're going to do games before our time, you know, whatever. Good, good games, bad games, and everything else in between. Yeah, exactly. Everything. <laughs> well, you know, well, there's no limit. That sounds familiar. Where did, hmm. where did they get that, Bo? I oh, I don't know. But, <laughs> hey, guys, I mean, how long have the Lego games been around, actually? Well, the... Just in general. Like, when did general? they first begin? Well, I'm talking specifically about the the Lego franchise games, the ones that are... Based off of specific movies or, or licensed properties. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm talking about. Just that entire... It, it's pretty much almost like its own genre of video game. Right. It's, and it's its own subset from the yeah, Lego games. Yeah. Like, they have some, like, creator-type I mean, how... stuff. When but... was when was the first franchised Lego game? That's what I'm looking up right now, actually. I mean, how long, have, how long like, have they been? Like, Wars, early, the very original. Early 2000s, I, right? I remember when it came out. Maybe, like, 05? Hmm. So the video game that was 2005, yeah. Oh, that was a good guess, wasn't it? And then the original trilogy, <clears throat> Lego Star Wars 2, in 2006. Yeah. So that's been around for a minute, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's been a little that's while. Over 15 years. Wow. Like Supernatural. It's a lot. <laughs> that's 19 years. No, 14, 14 years. years. 14, 14 years. 14 years. 14 years. You're mad. It's, it's almost 15. 2005 is almost 15 years. Yep. Look, okay, don't judge me for my math. <laughs> I'm not here to be your math teacher. So, and ever since the first Lego Star Wars, uh, the precedent was set for what these games are. There's a general template. Uh, you access uh, from a hub, you, generally, you access a series of levels through each portion of the story, be it each movie or, or if it's even just, just self-contained story arcs. It's a, it's a leveled game, and you access levels from the hub uh, where you will... The first time through, 
with through the story you'll play as whatever characters were present there you know the lego versions of them and uh, uh this lego set where you actually build objects together right and that was in the original gameplay you know like the original games it was like a build you build legos yeah and what's great about lego harry potter is that you use guardian leviosa instead yeah you use your spell which is really cool because that was a cool interpretation of that and you kind of see the spells and how that pertains to the story and it gives it almost a reason for why you can do that you know why you need to do that yeah and that's what i wanted to get into actually is that you know there's this basic template set and you know we mentioned the character abilities as one specific aspect of that uh staple but each game also adds its own flavor to the series with different games featuring you, you know different systems harry potter has the spell system which is not present in any of the other games uh and you in some of the later games, maybe a more open world flavor. The Marvel games have, you know, those specific character superpowers. You know what? I, we forgot. Sorry to cut you off, but we forgot about Lego Indiana Jones. Hey, I mentioned it earlier. Whoa. That was an amazing few games, wasn't it? Like two of them or three of them? I still, have two. One. I still two. haven't even played those. Oh, yet, those are honestly. some of the best Lego games to ever play. I'm telling you right now, I had so much fun playing those games. Yeah, Lego Indiana Jones 1 was a lot of fun. I, I haven't played the second one, but it, apparently it's the original series plus Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Right. But it, it was completely redone, so it, it doesn't use the original levels. It's like its own new game that's apparently very different and, and completely right. separate and not like the gameplay of the other ones right it, it was really cool because you had special abilities in that one as well like you had your whip for instance so you can use to swing across things and climb up things yeah i remember that weapon and that item in particular that's something that the other games don't have indy was kind of the only special character in that game the other right. characters they didn't, couldn't really do anything. a lot of them didn't have really special abilities i it's been a while since i played but indy was kind of just the the all around just how yeah. in lego star wars the jedi were the characters to be right that's exactly who you want to be because you have the most overpowered abilities yeah except exclusively when you need to use like the blaster grapple ability or whatever right. but most of the time yeah you wanted to be the jedi because they could use the force and nobody else could and in this game lego harry potter you want to be the wizards and 90 percent of the characters are wizards or right something, but exactly but uh the, i can they only do remember like, a few other characters I can only remember like one or two times when I played as a character that wasn't a wizard in the game. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, Filch, who's a squib, and there's a few muggle characters like the Dursleys in there. And, uh, and then just like random characters like the station guard, the boy. Yes. That's another thing that the Lego franchise does is this, this vast array of characters. They do a really good so job with that. Quick question. How do you play as the muggles in this game? Free play mode. Free play. Free play? So, yeah, okay. that's what I was going to okay. get into with the template. So okay, I guess we're kind of all over the place. But the the throughout the story, you get to play through each level exclusively as the characters that appeared in that level and, you know, the source material or who they want there. But after you complete a level, you can go back to it from the hub and free play it using any character. Now, at, at first, that just seems like a fun way to replay the level, but it, free play is actually a separate mode altogether where you can access some of the extras in the game, like the bonus uh, collectibles and right. get 100% completion rather than just story completion. So, And you have to use free play because there are some puzzles that require abilities that are not within the narrative's characters for that level. And so you have to free play in order to access all of the content after you unlock more characters. Wow, no kidding. I would say that the biggest aspect of free play mode would be the ability to switch your character at any moment during the game. That's yeah. what's so great about it because you need to do that because, like you said, different characters have different abilities to unlock different puzzles and get through stages. And so the way you do that is literally just clicking your trigger button and you yeah. can switch to a new character. Yeah, any in free character. play mode, you could switch be freely switch between any of the characters you choose. Exactly. And you can choose your team. You have to choose your team a little bit wisely, but the game has kind of a an automatic... Uh, it, it will automatically set your team using the abilities that you'll need. Exactly. As a whole, but it knows. you get to choose your, your characters. 
And and that's a lot of fun going back in each level and being anybody and being able to freely switch and access each puzzle for a hundred percent completion. And that aspect isn't lost in Lego Harry Potter. The difference in this game though, is that you kind of have two hubs or in these two games, right? In Lego Harry Potter, the first one, years one through four, you have the Leaky Cauldron, which is your like cantina hub. Which is connected to Diagon Alley, right? Yeah, which is connected to Diagon Alley, where you can, uh, and that's where at the hub, you not only access levels, but you also can buy equipment, uh, which in this case is spells. Yeah, I say equipment, but it's just spells. Uh, you can buy other characters, and you can buy uh, your bricks and stuff. Th yeah, there's these gold bricks that are used for 100% completion. There's these red bricks that are used for unlocking, oh, basically cheats. Yeah, extras they call them. They call it extras, but they're you know they're they're, they're basic cheats, but they're encouraging the game, and some of them are are very useful for. Uh, getting 100% completion. Right. Uh, I would say there are some that are almost necessary at some point, some points, you know what I mean? To yeah. really get all the studs in the game, to get two wizard on each level, you have to have the ghost stud collecting. Yeah. You can collect the ghost studs, which there's a ghost that guides you and leaves behind the currency Lego studs, but they're ghostly and you can't collect them. But if you get the ghost studs extra, you're able to collect those and that seems like a natural progression. So it seems less like a cheat and something that you should be able to do. Ass right. Assuming you find the brick and then spend the money to unlock it. Exactly. Because you're given it so early on that it's not like it's, it's something that you get at the end of the game or anything. It's you usually get that one pretty quickly. Like you and I got it in both games, like within the first year. Yeah. I noticed that. And then the other thing is that, you know, the other extras are, are kind of just goofy, silly things like turning your wands into carrots or right. uh, playing on an ice rink or, you know, the little mustache and glasses disguise on the characters. It's yeah. just goofy stuff like that. Those you can purchase from the hub. And a lot of them uh, actually kind of make sense within the narrative. They try to be a little creative with it. You've got uh, the leaky cauldron from which you a access the levels. You've got Madame Malcolm's robes where you buy the other characters. You've got the Wiz Whisker's wizarding equipment, whatever it is, where you buy like the bricks in in the first one. And then the second one, you have the Weasley shop. And you have to go pretty far out of the way to get to that, too. I remember we were looking for that place forever when we were looking on this, this game. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. And you can buy spells and stuff. And that's a lot of fun. And you can access the bonus levels, which are fully destructible. And those are a lot of fun. Um and that's a lot of that's just like the extra content. And then you have the story. And once you leave the leaky cauldron, it, there's a separate hub, which is Hogwarts. And then the second game is expanded and it now includes a, a much larger area. And so you have a second and that's unique to this game. You have like a second hub. So you have like a hub within a hub, which is Hogwarts. And yet the Hogwarts still follows the narrative. You're still uh, in the continuity but they're not classified as technical levels. So from Hogwarts, you learn the spells within a certain order between levels. And you'll be able to access different areas that you couldn't before using those spells. It's like partially hub, partially story, which is kind of cool. But you'll access the same areas again and again and, and pass the same areas. Kind of, kind of more like an open world map now which is kind of the the idea of when they did that like it's like you're going around the school you're actually doing like the movie did because they had to walk from place to place to do the tasks they needed to do right and so they managed to create the sense of an open world while still having a leveled game now i think future games like uh lego lord of the rings expands on that even more in the lego marvel games where you've got like a fully explorable like open world area and you can like control bigger. the camera that's what's so different about that one is you can control where the camera goes and this one there's you can control where it goes a little bit but it's mostly fixed yeah i know what you mean but it also kind of follows some of the more classic lego styles that we grow up with so it's kind of there's that nostalgic feeling so it's kind of really the bridge between like the classic games and the more modern ones because this is this is one of the the ones that didn't have the dialogue yet and yet it was going towards that open world that the other games embraced to a higher degree the letter arrived 
the one chose. The hat sorted. Return to Hogwarts and discover. Every story. Every spell. Every witch and wizard. Every Weasley. Weasley, 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 and Weasley. Every keeper, Quaffle, Hufflepuff, Hippogriff, Muggle, Mandrake, and more. generation. And for me, this one is very special because Harry Potter is a series that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I, I used to be obsessed with the books growing up. Uh, you know, I've watched all the movies. Uh, I was on Pottermore. I did that thing. I got sorted into Gryffindor. Of course. Uh, as a, We did that as a family. You're I a mean, Slytherin, right? I was a Slytherin the first time. I came back as a Hufflepuff. <laughs> but uh, no, I that was a lot of fun. As a family, we watched those movies. It was a lot of fun because it was just like the Marvel movies where you've seen every single one of them. But with Harry Potter, it was a whole different experience. We went to the movie theaters at midnight the yeah. night before. We would skip school the next day so we could do that. It was a oh, whole I went to the midnight us. book premieres. Yes, too. you went to the book. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, for six and seven. I I was I, I literally was obsessed. It was my obsession. I, I was so into Harry Potter. I still love it so much. You were in the news too, actually. Uh, when you were at one of those book sales. Yeah, it was, it was in the Herald newspaper. Uh huh. And on some radio station. Yeah, I got caught because I was dressed up <laughs> as Harry Potter. You know, I'm this like nerdy <laughs> elementary school kid uh -huh. um, with a, a a reading level that was a little bit more advanced, apparently. Well, <laughs> you, you don't say. Well, you know, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just, you know, I'm giving context, guys. I'm giving context. <laughs> um, context is what he calls it. You pompous context. bastard. You uh, asshole. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so. I thought we weren't going to be pretentious on here. Well, it's not pretentious if it's true. <laughs> okay, oh, okay. oh, is that how this goes? It's really? how it's going to be. Wow. So, yeah, th this one was really special to me. And I, long before this one came out, I was really waiting for it because I knew Lego Harry Potter sets existed. And I knew that Harry Potter movies were coming out. And those are the prerequisites for every Lego game. It has to be a pre-existing set that they're already making. And it usually coincides with the release of a movie. Wow. Have they right. made the Fantastic Beasts Lego sets yet? I, I think you know so. What? I think they made the sets, but they haven't made any games. No, no games. But I think their sets, like, just like you said, I think I've seen them before. They their kind sets of slowed everything. down. They really did. With, with the movie releases. They released that Lego Dimensions thing, which was kind of like an all-in-one. And it right. had Doctor Who, which is really cool. But um, I never got into that one because it, it kind of had that th the Disney thing and like, you know, right. Like that Disney infinity feel. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Disney infinity. I don't know. I mean, I might get it at some point and check it out because, you know, these games were really fun. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of them are more geared, I guess, more towards kids now. And maybe that pisses me off a little bit i don't right. know <laughs> no but they're fun and i definitely give you know this one a shot um i would say if you're a harry potter fan more so you know it, it was really weird too because it was almost like it was a good adaptation of the movie 
in the video game in a lego game like they did better than they could have done in any other game almost you know what i mean like with the way they portray scenes like they do a really good job summing it up yeah um i definitely feel that you sorry i definitely feel that you have to have seen the movie first in order to understand kind of what's going on because it's it's very fast it's very blink and you'll miss it but at the same time when you watch it you're like, okay, this is a storyline. Like, I could, I could see what was going on without a lot of context, right. but it it helps to have that context because, um, you know, not everything is outright spoken, but at the same way, it tells its own tale. I think just having seen that tale already in some form and being somewhat familiar with the the plot structure will allow you to understand the story better, and. In a way, it's its own standalone story. In fact, my fiance Lillian, she played these and has never seen the Harry Potter movies, which we'll have to fix very soon. If she's going to live in our house, she has to see the Harry. And Potter we're going to have to teach our daughter, you know, to wow. Force. But um, <laughs> no, we're not, she enjoyed these games, and I almost had her on the podcast because she was really a big fan. When we first met, she actually said that Lego Harry Potter was one of the. The, her favorite games and then when i came to find out later she didn't even watch the harry potter movies i was like what but i guess this one's that much fun and specifically it was this one it wasn't any of the other lego games it was lego harry potter right and you're not going to be that parent that t doesn't teach your kid about wizards because witchcraft is evil and you can't be that person ash witchcraft yeah. <laughs> is of the devil exactly no so it's poker mom I had family that actually believed that like Harry Potter was evil because it was satanic, which is weird because Rowling is actually a Christian, uh, an Anglican, I believe, and right, and, and the, the the series even relies somewhat on on biblical allusions. Yeah. So and it it, it delves into, uh, it delves into morals and and elements you know that are kind of taught in the Christian religion. So, uh, it's so no different than the Chronicles of Narnia, really, in that sense. Aside from not having the specific Christian allegory, quick question: Has has anybody ever said that uh, Fortnite is satanic in any way yet? Is, I'm is sure that become a thing. People think that video games are, and any popular video game is obviously the worst because yeah, I'm, it's I'm rotting sure there's kids' brains, moms, there is causing violence. <laughs> God, there, there were moms out there that were terrorizing Minecraft when it came out. Now it's Fortnite. oh yeah, I mean, oh you know yeah, how it is. So Warcraft. That but, sounds about right. But honestly. then Minecraft was actually being used in educational programs. It was. So it was a, as a learning tool. So, you know, it just goes to show, well, I've actually done the research. I wrote a paper on this actually for a college class oh, about how no. video games don't cause violence and they don't incite violence. Like, okay, here's the thing. All right. Oh, here's my pollution. personal theory. Here's a digression, but if you're going to go like shoot up a school or something just because you saw it in a video game, you were mentally deranged to begin with. There was something wrong with you, and anything could have triggered that. It right. wasn't the video game's fault. You, that kid needed help. Absolutely. There's videos of kids that would play Minecraft servers that would just break their computers when something stupid happened. Like that. That's mental retardation. I'm sorry. Are we allowed to say the R word on here? I, I wouldn't okay? call it retardation. I would just. <laughs> I would. I would just call it bad mental health issues. There yeah. You go. We want to be respectful yeah. about people that have mental uh, disorders. I mean, I have Asperger's personally, so I'll be the uh, the the advocate here for <laughs> for Asperger's okay. for autism or something. I don't know. Um, I digress. Yeah, back to Lego <laughs> Harry Potter. Back to ADT. Harry Potter or Lego or you know the collection of those. Well, what's great about the game too is that it's also an educational game. It can be if you really think about it, because I mean, building blocks are the same thing in Minecraft. You know what I mean? You're building blocks. Legos. Well, this whole thing is kind of like it, it's a child playing with the Lego sets and remembering the storyline from the movie. Right. But they're a child, so they're a little goofy, so they'll change the story a little bit. And these games do. They make a lot of goofy changes to the storyline, like uh, Voldemort killing uh, Snape, not because he wanted to take possession of the elder one but because snape took the last cookie out of the cookie jar yes that's right oh, yeah. i remember that wow <laughs> yes yeah, that's so funny yeah it, it was a lot of fun and and then just mild changes like that they'll truncate the story in order to just get to the next scene more quickly okay 
you know, this is the basic understanding. That's why I say having the context of the movie helps because there Absolutely. may be some scenes that kind of seem disjointed. Well, why is he going to the restricted library? There's no precedent. Exactly. But in other cases, you can kind of fill in the gaps and fill in the story in a different way. And so it's very much like a child's mind that, you know, like watched the movies and decided to go play with the sets, but they don't quite grasp the complexities of, of the plot. Maybe they're really young or, 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 or they're just that imaginative and they change it a little bit. So, so basically they're all like the Lego movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the Lego like, movie also did a video game based on that. I know, I'm, uh, I'm talking like about the play. concept of all of that just being a child just playing with Legos and just yeah. kind of adding their own inflections. That's pretty much what exactly happens in the Lego movie. It does, and I, I think that's kind of what they're going for. They're a little bit more explicit in the Lego movie yeah. about that, but that's very much what this feels like. See, I can't relate to that because I personally don't have a good experience with that movie. I oh, didn't really – For real? I, didn't, I don't know. Just I, I didn't have – I didn't like that movie that much. So honestly. everything isn't awesome. <laughs> everything is awesome. So awesome, dude. Taco oh, Tuesday, I, man. I, I really didn't like that movie. I mean, I love the video games, but I just that, that I don't movie know. is a mind fuck for kids. Yeah. That's what it that is. is. It it's is. it's like the old Raggedy Ann and Andy movie. The, the, yeah, there was a cartoon movie of Raggedy Ann and Andy, and it is a goddamn drug fueled mind trip, right, Robert? I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh. God damn it. I got to show you guys this fucking movie, man. It's it, ridiculous. I don't know. Honestly, I just didn't connect to that movie. I didn't. I did thought, you watch I, all of it? I did. I found it oh, over. Uh, everything was so overdone. Oh, I mean, wow. I don't know. It was a kid's movie, but at the same time, it was a well-written and intelligently written yeah, it kid's didn't, movie. I can, it I didn't, can say and, there was thought and put into it, sure. Yeah. It didn't just, talk down to kids, and those are always right. the best kind of, of kids' movies. And that feel is very much as present in at least the older Lego games. Yeah. Like I said, some of the newer ones, I think, kind of cater with the humor. And, you know, you kind of have to cringe a little bit when they say something. But right. there's still a lot of fun, and I know that there's new ga gameplay aspects that are being explored. Um, but in Lego Harry Potter, particularly, I think um, both casual fans of the movies and books and, uh, you know, hardcore fans or I guess even non fans, people who have, you know, s slept under a rock and haven't watched all the Harry Potter movies or they had parents that thought it was satanic. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but either way, um, <laughs> you, damn it. I think you'll enjoy the game coming from all those backgrounds. But in particular, I mean, for me. I really like it because I'm a hardcore Harry Potter fan. Oh, wow. Um, and I feel like it, it, it really does encapsulate the spirit of the movies. It uses the soundtracks from the movies, which really gives you the feel. And um, it also the, the characters likenesses are, are right on par with the way with the way they're presented in the movies. Right. And there's there's always a reason for everything in the Lego games. I find that really cool. Like anytime anything happens, there's always a in in universe reason that it's a Lego you know, yeah. there's always a reason that you build things with using Wingardium Leviosa. You use that often. You it it's all the puzzle solving that feels so natural and like it's a, actually based on the movie still. Yeah, and there's even uh, spells that were created for the game that are still based on the system and use the the Latin base for the names of those spells. And then it uses several spells that are even ones that are not specifically in just the books or, or the movies, um, you know, the crossing over into a little bit of both. And they really paid attention to the source material. Um, they're in with the lore. You've got Wingardium Leviosa, which allows you to manipulate objects and hover. Everybody knows that one. But you've also got in five through eight uh, Defendo, which is the the cutting spell. Right. Um, or the severing spell, I think, severing charm, I think. Um, you've got Ridiculous used to repel Bogarts. Aguamenti used to create water and back in five through eight again. Um, just a whole plethora of that. And also the characters. The characters, it's practically every character you could ever want to play as. Uh, it's like your fantasy cast, you know? Right, exactly. Even, you know, you've got Dean Thomas. Seamus Finnegan, a lot of background characters uh, that you may have seen in the back, you know, heard about if you read the books, but they're not like, you know, main characters. They're not even supporting characters. You know, you've got like Daedalus Diggle, 
Right. Just, Does anybody remember who that guy is? Well, I no do, one. but <laughs> just useless characters. But they do that for a reason. It's this. It's like you said. It's that wide variety of characters you can choose from and every lego game does that i mean lego star wars had the gonk droid right and the pk droid i mean come on those those were the ogs absolutely they were useless characters that had no special ability but they were there they were there just to add to that variety of characters to play as yeah not to mention there's also another theme which was customizable characters oh that was are fun yeah ever since i think lego star wars 2 they started doing that where you can customize a character and give it whatever special abilities you want and make it look like you want. We haven't toyed right. around with that a whole lot. But. No, but it was a lot of fun because you could make your character have, you know, like I remember in the Star Wars game, you could have your character have a lightsaber. They're a Jedi, yeah. you know, and but have a different head and legs to do different things. And it got pretty zany in like Lego Indiana Jones. You could have oh, them with the whip. Or, yes. You know, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Hey, Collateral Gamers. Sorry to interrupt you for just a moment. Do you like Collateral Gaming Video Game Podcast? Do you love it? Do you think you could love it even more? What if I told you you could get paid just for listening to this podcast? I know that sounds crazy. Believe me, I don't even get paid for this shit, and here I am editing it right now. Of course, that does change whenever I use the app called PodCoin. It's a free new app, and it literally pays you to listen to podcasts. Here's how it works. You listen to your favorite podcasts, and you earn a currency called PodCoin while you listen. You could turn that PodCoin in for gift cards at places like Amazon and Starbucks, or if you want, you can even donate that to charity. The more you listen, the more you earn. Here is all that you have to do. Go download the app right now on the App Store on either iOS or Android, and once you get signed up, I have a special code just for you. Simply use our code CollateralPod, and you'll get 300 PodCoin just for signing up. And if you listen to enough of us on there, you can get a Starbucks or Amazon gift card on us. Go ahead and go listen to this podcast or any podcast on PodCoin, and don't forget to sign up with our code. Again, that's CollateralPod, capital C, capital P, all one word. It'll change the way you listen to podcasts. That being said... Back on with the show. So, and for these games in particular, did you notice any significant differences between Lego Harry Potter years one through four and years five through eight? There were some changes that were subtle and not so subtle. You know, a lot of it was just the ease of the gameplay. You know, yeah. it was it was a lot easier to play the newer games but than the older still ones. Still a challenge, but. Um, they improved on uh, several of the, the most general things. For instance, right. in the first game, you have to have Wingardium Leviosa equipped in order to lift objects. Um, and it is the most frequently used spell in the game, so you have to keep switching back to it. Right. In 5 through 8, they've reconfigured the system to where casting spell is dedicated to one button. And so you have a button which uh, the circle button or the B button yeah. on the Xbox version, I guess. We played on PS4 Circle. Um, allows right. you to cast Leviosa at any time, um, assuming that you have the pink aura around the object. Not dissimilar to the the Force abilities in Lego Star Wars. Um, yeah, they're pretty similar. I've noticed. Yeah, it, it might as well be the same thing, you know, as when guarding Leviosa. <laughs> Leviosa, not yeah, even Leviosa. being able. To... <laughs> even even being able to like manipulate the characters, you know, just to, just to goof around. So that was a, a good gameplay improvement, was being able to uh, to ca have Leviosa on by default and have basically a dedicated button for that. Although it's used for a couple other things too, but it, it's done well. And they, that was a, a good improvement. Uh, the game is more fluid. The, the hub has been expanded. So remember how I said you had like Leaky Cauldron and then you had Hogwarts inside as like an inner hub? Well, five through eight kind of combines those. And so you have Leaky Cauldron and then you go to London, you go to King's Cross Station and then you go to Hogwarts and then Hogwarts is much larger and you can go to Hogsmeade and several of the surrounding areas. And there's even all the locations from the seventh movie, uh, parts one and two, like just all around the world added together in this one like open world kind of hub area right well that's what's great about it is that you have to travel to different places to actually get to where you want to be you know throughout the story you're following the headless nick 
you know, you're following him throughout the story because that's that's how the game shows your path where to go. It's like the golden trail in Skyrim. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like it, it's the same the same general thing. Um, but you know, you're you're following the ghosts throughout this huge lobby area to get you to different places that you most of it you unlock throughout time and then finally once you finish the story you've unlocked it all and you can do it go through all of it in free play mode and there's some extra things to do like collecting hogwarts crests right uh, students in peril which are uh usually like a, a specific puzzle where you help a student who's magically accosted in some way right yeah <laughs> stuck themselves somewhere or being bullied or something um you can collect gold bricks the red bricks to that unlock extra abilities um there's always something to do and none of it feels like a chore um no it it feels so smooth you know you and i we want to destroy everything because we want to get the studs we want to get true wizard we want to just you know get through the story and not miss anything you there's know? a lot of destroying right and that's a lot more fun when you have one person who can go to one edge of the map and right. just destroy everything and then and the other can, can kind of content, figure out what puzzles need to get you along through the main story. Exactly. That's so nice to have the characters doing that because you almost pick up the role as you go. Like you start walking in one direction and the other character starts walking the other and eventually you find the right, the right way, you know. And it's always so seamless. That's what I love about these games. And one improvement that I noticed in, it was in this game and, and continued in, in future games uh, I'm not sure if it started in this one, was the ability to to split screen at will. Yes. So in the previous games, you always shared the same window. And so if one character moved, it pulled the other player. It was a little difficult to take different paths. Um, right. You couldn't. You, ha- you were forced to work together. But in, mm. in now what happens is for most of the time, they share the same window. But when they walk apart in most areas, the screen will split, allowing both characters to go. Uh, you you can't go to other screens, but you can you can access that whole area, right? And as you as the character walks out of frame, it's that's when it starts to split the screen, right? You know when you start to walk out of frame and do a different direction, you it it you start to take control of your camera and it splits the screen. And as you move along, you can tell actually because because of the angle that it's at, you wouldn't be able to tell where you are in comparison to the other character. But as you walk across, the split screen changes across the screen. You know, it'll go from diagonal to horizontal. It's almost vertical line, you know, as it moves around. And that's a really cool aspect they did because you can see where you are in relation to the other character. Yeah. And it's completely seamless and it'll open up and yeah, where, whichever direction you happen to be in. Right. And so as long as you're following your character, um, you sh- yeah, you're seamlessly able to move apart. And that's co-op done right. Um. I I rarely see multiplayer done so well. And even couch co-op, you know, local multiplayer is, is just not a priority anymore. Um, we don't see it a lot anymore. It's mostly online play. And this game right. encourages, uh, you know, the couch co-op again. And, and it does it right. Like I said, it's it's one of the only cooperative multiplayer games I've ever played that's that's exactly the way you'd want it. Yeah, I, they, I'd have to agree completely. They, they, did, uh, they, they did it perfectly flawlessly. You can drop in and out any time as a second player you don't need the second player but it, it provides a better experience i you know in my opinion but you can also go it solo um even just now when we were playing you know i would play and then you get distracted i say okay just drop out for a few minutes and right, jump yeah. in and, and that was fine um and then you can keep going and you, with the newer games either player can drop out too so I, I really wish more games would kind of embrace that and I really feel like that's done well, and with the split screen and everything, it, it's just perfect. But yeah, the the cooperative multiplayer is, is done superbly, the way cooperative multiplayer should be, and uh, th- that's one of the best aspects, in my opinion. Just just alone, um, it's a game you can kick back and enjoy without having to put you know too much thought, but actually you know challenging yourself and entertaining yourself, and also uh, getting to be a fan. And and see these characters and play as whatever characters you want and use the spells and and feel powerful and feel fun, you know, uh, and so much just destructible. I think Bo and Robert likened it kind of to an arcade game with how much is just destructible in the environment, and how much studs, which are the oh, currency you can it, collect. It's totally pretty much an arcade game by all intents and purposes. I mean, it, 
It reminds me a lot of almost like the Gauntlet Legends. It, that that was a remake of Gauntlet that was released in the arcades, maybe about mid two thousands, I want to say. But that it was kind of similar. I mean, you had multiple characters you can drop in at any time. You didn't really need the other characters to have a great experience. But I mean, it, that that was based on the old Gauntlet franchise. But these Lego games, they're all taking recognizable franchises and making them into new experiences and um, throwing in that arcade experience that or that gameplay, I should say, just kind of makes it a little easier for guys like me who like more nostalgic gaming to really get into it. Yeah, you know? part for the course after the movie we just did, House of the Dead. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> here, here we went from a video game movie, and now we're going to a movie video, video game based on movies. Yeah, or yeah, video on, on, based on, on a, movies and movies based on video games. Yeah, well, exactly, video games to something to that effect. Games. I'm sorry, I'm all... Buzzed video on the games beers. Based on video games. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I, I I'm drinking a beer, so that's why I feel all yeah. sound all weird. You're good. <laughs> and in many ways, this is the best. Uh, you know, these are the best Harry Potter games. You know, in a lot of ways, they're completely faithful to the source material. Um, they do take some liberties, obviously, some creative liberties with the story. Uh, like we mentioned before, the co-op. Since so that has to be available in every level, another storyline change is, is changing it so that there's always a second player like Hermione getting dropped in the first task in Goblet of Fire with Harry. Right. You know, um, just little things like that so that there's always a multiplayer experience. And and that is one storyline change that all the games always have done ever since the very first Lego star Wars is they always make it co-op friendly. Right. What I love about this game is the amount of lore you can learn from it. Like with, when I played the games, I played them before I even read the books. Okay, I played these yeah. games before I read the books, so I didn't know a lot of the characters. But as I played this game, like you said, there had to be so many extras that they had to do, and they're going to be faithful to the books and, and to the movies. So they have characters like Daedalus Diggle. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I, who wouldn't Who would remember that? But that's extra lore for the game, and it allows you to expand on the you know universe just in the same way that Pottermore did. Yeah. And and that's something that's a lot of fun for me who read the books. I mean, it's been a while, but I remember a lot of things about the books. It, you know, like I said, it this was my passion. And, you know, the, I am fan, a fan of a lot of the earlier Harry Potter games with the games that kind of had a more Zelda-esque feel. And I'll say that those hold up. And um, we, I want to do um, Prisoner of Azkaban is one of the games I have planned for a future season. Right. But like I said, the, the Lego Harry Potter games kind of uh fulfill a lot of fantasies that none of them did and still have you know a fun puzzle based um gameplay that that's you know completely devoid of of frustration and while geared towards children there's a lot in there that's you know for guys our age or just fans of the series of each series in general in fact They'll take series that are, you know, generally dark or or a little bit too complex, and and they have to tone it down a little bit to make it kid friendly. Right, and I think that was an important thing they did because it levels with your child uh, childish aspect aspect of the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's it's geared towards kids, and you can see that, and I appreciate that, but not like overwhelmingly so. At least in the Harry Potter games, right. It does give you a sense of appreciation, um, and and I can kick back and you know this isn't the game I'll probably brag about to my friends at this age, but right. it's a lot of fun. It, it, all of these games hold a special place in my heart. Uh, I think Lego Harry Potter years five through eight was the very first game that I I got a I platinumed on. Of course, we were on Xbox, so it's called something else, but you get the every achievement for, which I also did on Spider Man PS4. Prior to the DLC. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I was really invested into this game, and I did a, almost 100% completion on LEGO Harry Potter years 1 through 4 as well. So playing these again, I remember there were several things that I still remembered years later because I, I guess I'd put a lot into this. But in any case, um, I guess that is m mostly what there is to say. Do you have any final thoughts, Dakota? Uh, well, like you said, this was nostalgia for us. Um, it holds special places in both of our hearts. 
mainly because of just how it how we grew up with it and how we allowed it into our lives but that was harry potter for me you know this game was this is what introduced me really to the harry potter world before i even started seeing the movies at least read the books i had seen a few of the movies but i hadn't really seen them until i played after played this game for me as as a hardcore fan um this game gets a lot of appreciation from me um like i said for paying attention to detail for being a fun game for any kind of fan of the series and for any kind of gamer. And it also gets a lot of appreciation just for, you know, the fantasy feel and, and the idea of playing as your favorite characters in free play mode. Uh, There's a lot that the Lego games do right. And they've kind of stuck to a formula and they haven't changed much over the years and yet they don't need to i think they can appeal to even a new demographic um assuming that this franchise keeps going in the ways that it does so what's coming up next in the world of collateral gaming well like we said before we are going to do an indie game review hopefully two weeks from now i know we promised it earlier and that's going to be we happy few i've been playing some of that dakota hasn't played it yet well i've played a little bit of it a little bit okay Well, uh, we hope to get that released within two weeks, but don't hold us to that. What you can hold us to, though, is going to be our next numbered episode, and that is going to be... That is going to be The Last of Us. Um, I remember buying that game originally, and oh, I had so much fun with that game, so I think everybody's going to be excited for that one. It was a huge hit, and they made a remastered version, which I believe is the one I bought. Yeah. So I believe that's the one we'll be playing. That's the one we have on PS4, yeah. Um, But there won't be any significant differences from that in the original. It's our Last of Us episode. Um, So we're super excited about that. That is a really well-received game. Um, And The Last of Us Part 2 is coming out soon. So good timing on us for that, I guess. Right. And then after that, it's going to be our season finale. And we'll go ahead and reveal that now. That's going to be Spider-Man, the PS4 game. Woo! The best adaptation of Spider-Man. So, and that should be, you know, the next four weeks. And, it, and yeah, like you said, that is the best adaptation, in my opinion, better than uh, any other movie version of Spider-Man. And I love the Tobey Maguire portrayal. Uh, I actually appreciated the Andrew Garfield portrayal. And Tom Holland is, you know, as Stan Lee said, the embodiment of Spider-Man. So, uh, but Yuri Lewenthal, you know, who's also the voice of Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto. <laughs> but Yuri Lewenthal does, in my opinion, the best Peter Parker performance yet. And that's in a video game, so that's crazy. We're going to talk about that next next episode, assuming we don't have any kind of mid-season hiatus. Like you having a baby? Yeah, that's that's the idea. So that may... Well, I mean, it will happen. That will be the next next. Just hopefully um, we'll be able to get that out before the baby's born. So you can find Collateral Gaming on iTunes, on Spotify, on Chill Lover Radio app, on Podcoin, where you can uh, get, actually get paid to listen to your podcasts um as we mentioned before in the ad and then you can also listen to us uh wherever you get your podcasts uh we're posting our video versions on youtube we've got our patreon um and we've uploaded our very first let's play commentary we're going to have more out soon the very first one is free and then after that they're going to be patreon exclusive um and Anything else to say, Dakota? Play Lego Harry Star <laughs> Lego Harry Star Wars. You, you're okay, Dakota. You're out of your mind. I think you're too tired <laughs> for this. It's, dude, it's, you got You got to keep four that. In the morning. That was awesome. You, you got to fucking keep that in the podcast. Seriously, that was great. Like that. That was amazing. Play Lego <laughs> Harry Potter, guys. La- yeah. Larry Hago, Larry <laughs> Hero, <laughs> Hago Lego Potter, Harry, Star Lego. Wars, Indiana Jones. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to find a way to put Avatar in there. Uh, like, yeah. I mean, oh, those, any those uh, yeah, the, any last thoughts, audience? Well, I honestly enjoyed watching you guys play this game. It. What are you it, talking about? You didn't watch. I totally you watched, watched Slumber it. Party Massacre the entire time. I don't know what you're talking about. I was multitasking we're, we're all two screens, three so. of them. Two screens, man. We were able to watch two screens. It looked like okay. you were getting ended it with, I mean, 
I only played the first Star Wars, Lego Star Wars. So I mean, yeah. Oh, you did play. See, you could have chimed in that any. Point that was a long time podcast. ago. I barely remember. I only played the first one. I, it's kind of how it is for me. Maybe a Lego Batman. I was, was about to say, you ever play it. a Lego Batman? That was about it. That was a good Lego yeah. series too. Just yeah. the first one. Well, I played the first one. I haven't played any of the other ones. I like Lego Batman. That's yeah. a fun game. Which was also made into the Lego movie. Yeah, Lego Batman movie. Uh-huh. That was a lot of fun too. Michael Cera. Um. Anyways, guys. That being said, I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Dakota Chancellor. I'm Robert Ortegon. And I am Bo Maddox. Y'all aren't Collateral Gaming, but we are, and we are out. Oh, <laughs> we're gaming. better. Never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. Tired of living like a blind man. I'm sick of cycle without it. <sighs> I'm sick of sight without a sense of feeling. This is how you, you remind, remind me. me. <laughs> this is how you, you remind me of what I really, really am. am. This on, is Bo. how you remind me of what I really am. It's not like you. Come on, Bo. You guys just really want me to end this podcast, <laughs> do, you, do you? You just want me to end all see, of this. What, what, what you guys can't see is that we were pointing at Bo to cueing Bo to sing this whole time. He had oh, no idea Robert. what we were doing. And Robert. No, I knew exactly what you were doing. I just refused to participate. Because... This, gonna, col- this collateral uh, gaming extras is a musical number. No, it's not, and it's not going to be goddamn Nickelback. Why? What's wrong with Nickelback? Everything. You know what? Re- you're just Nickelback, a Nickelback hater. Nickelback is why rock music is no longer relevant. You know what? I have the balls to say it, okay? I have the courage. I like Nickelback. I don't think it's overproduced. I think it's a talented... They're a talented band. They've won a lot of awards, and y'all used to like them. Y'all just th- decided it was cool to hate Nickelback, and you jumped on the hate bag wagon. He and said, I guys. think you have no taste. So ha! You know what's cool? motherfucker? You know what's cool? The Miz beating John Cena. That's cool. What the hell does that have to do with anything we were talking about, Robert? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe it has to do with collateral wrestling. No. Maybe. Maybe. Collateral we'll have Robert. That shit. Hello? Collateral wrestling, Robert? Really? RVD making his debut to TNA again. Whoa. Ooh. God damn. Rob Van Dam. So what would you guys think of the episode we just recorded? Um, I think it was I longer. Wouldn't, I wouldn't piss on it if it was on fire i would throw it right in the trash what What the fuck (laughs) i'm playing guys calm (laughs) down i'm fucking around (laughs) i don't know i like i said i like uh 
I like Lego, Indiana Jones, Harry Potter, Star Wars, uh, Avatar. All right, Fuck look. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you know what the question is, okay? You can stop laughing now. I don't no, fucking know. I will to hear continue that shit. laughing. It's it might, late. I'm supposed to be in bed right no, now. I don't care. No one wants to hear your shit, Bo. Fuck it. Hey, I'll tell you guys what, okay? Our coworker, whose name we will not speak for legal reasons. Oh, Alejandro. Oh, um, wow. He said something to me the other day, and I, I just feel like the public needs to know, okay? Oh, no. So he, 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 goes, he comes up to me, and he says something, something about you know, getting his dick sucked or something or, or no, he said that our boss wants you to suck his dick. That's it. That's what he said. Oh, uh, now I'm not saying this is true about our boss, but they, and his, his name, I, I won't speak for legal reasons. Not the one that you're thinking, but the new boss, one of the new bosses, apparently. Oh, that's what, what? Alejandro thinks. What? Uh, but I want to tell you okay. where he went with this. Okay. So he then goes and says, because I said, I, I don't think he's gay. He's, you know, he's got a wife. And then he's like, oh, oh no, it's not gay to suck a man's dick. Jesus Christ. Jesus and I was like, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you, you know, being gay, obviously, I, I don't have an issue with that. But, you know, um, that that actually is gay. Though. <laughs> yeah. That's that that's the definition. That That's honestly <laughs> the n number one factor definition of being gay. I mean, hey, my, my sexuality isn't completely, like, solid, you know? I, I see sexuality as a spectrum. It's, it's kind of fluid, you know? Um, I'm open-minded. I've experimented. I've, I've done things. But... Okay, you libtard. <laughs> but, okay, here's the thing. I mean, but, I mean that, yeah, that, that, that actually is gay. I mean, that's okay if, if, if he's, you know, you know, whatever. So, I don't know. I, I just feel like... I felt Ooh. like none of this was necessary. Ooh. Not Ooh. one bit of this Not was one necessary. Bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ash, what were you Ash, thinking? Ash, what the hell? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> it's, it's it's been on me for a while. I was like why does he think that's that's not gay? I mean, I don't Dude, know. He's messed with his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, he went on. He, he, he went in. He, he contacted our other coworker about it, who just kept walking forward. <laughs> that's oh Dave. I mean, Dave's going to be on this podcast at some point. The movie podcast, I should say. Don't you think so, Bo? David. I do hope so, honestly. He's fiddling with the audio for some reason. This is the extra segment, so we don't care. Dave. Now. Is the town's Ralph, Friday the Thirteenth? Hey, you're all you know, doomed. Did you know that Dave is a a champion? He's a record holder. He's he, a pool shark. He is the undefeated champion of pool. Pool shark or or p billiards if you're British. <laughs> in uh, at the four way barn grill. So does that mean that he's a champion? Yeah, I mean he's won money. I'm a champion. Lots of money already. Champ. Like he wins like seventy five dollars every time he wins. That's right, Eagle Eye. You're a champion. That's pretty good. I mean, that's hey, free food, bro. That's free food, man. Free food, free beer. It's all in Damn. gift cards, and he can't drive, but <laughs> it's a good <laughs> thing he's God walking distance it. from it. <laughs> where, damn it, Dave. Where, where is he going to spend the gift cards, though? You have to spend them at the four way. He, he can't go into oh uh, other four way gift cards, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yep. Food, yeah. Yeah. Food, yeah. Beer, yeah. Whatever. That makes sense. So he's just he's just getting free food. I mean, hey, I. I'd do that for free. Food. Right. Free food is great. Every Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Hey, uh, I, I don't think know. It's, it's about time that we go whoop Dave's ass at pool so we can oh, get that money. Oh, no. He, 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 <laughs> I played him at pool. You will not whip his ass unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> Whoa. Like, ser seriously. You know, I'm I'm really not that good at pool, so I, I, I won't take that bet. I'm terrible at pool. Honestly, <laughs> I, I wouldn't I'm say fucking... I'm terrible, and I would think I am, but I'm not. Pretty, pretty much anything that you would consider to be a man's game, I'm just terrible at. Darts? <laughs> oh, I suck at darts. I'm pretty good at darts. I think Roberts is our, our yeah. dart champion in here. Straight dart champion. Not too bad. But... Uh, it, it, it's okay to be, not be modest, Robert. It's okay. It's okay. Your modesty um, is killing me. It should. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what we're doing here. I don't know what any of us are doing here. I don't know what anyone is, is doing ever anymore. I don't know. I, 
I, I think that maybe God doesn't exist or something, so whatever. <laughs> that's that's my take on this whole thing. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what exists beyond anything, really, Bo. I mean, li- life is just a... The universe is just a constant. I'm not so sure that... It, right? I'm not like, so sure... Is, I'm not so sure that existence actually exists. So, I mean, you all are just NPCs in my own little world. We're just a simulation. Yeah, no, not even a simulation. Y'all are just y'all y'all are just beings I created. Figments entities. Of your so, so yeah, you're entities. God. So I'm Tom Cruise, on it. No, you're not good okay. enough to be Tom Cruise. All right. Can I be there Danny is no DeVito? Tom Cruise. There's no Tom Cruise. There's world. no Tom Cruise. Brad Pitt? No, none, none of them <gasps> exist. None of them exist. They, Keanu they Reeves. It's the Matrix. Keanu Reeves. The Keanu. Matrix? What, what, what do you know? The no, Matrix? Robert has done something <laughs> about the Matrix. <laughs> right, Robert? About John Wick 3 coming out soon. Ooh, John oh. Wick 3. Damn. I can't wait. But I still need to see the other two movies, <laughs> but I still can't wait. <laughs> damn it. God damn it. I got them recorded on DVR at home. When is Keanu Reeves not a badass? That's a I know. Question. Even right. in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, he's it's still true. a badass. And they're making another Bill and Ted. I'm so As excited. They As they should. Exactly. Part for the course, bro. At at the theater episode? For sure. That's going to be an at the theater episode. At the theater you episode. Know you know what? what we just watched and we, we were like, man, maybe we have to make this one and at the theater too. It was Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh, yeah. Or the we trailer, yeah. The trailer. And this was the in-game spoiling trailer, which, you know... We are still fresh out of Endgame. I mean, today literally marks the two-week mark that has been out. It's and still on my mind all the time. It's still on my mind. And it is now, I guess, since we're talking about video games, it has surpassed the number one charts and the number one, number top ten made movies, movies money made about movies. It's the yeah, highest grossing film of all time. Not, not adjusting for inflation. That and would be Gone with the Wind, right? That would be Gone yes. with the Wind. Which features a man named Ashley, interestingly enough. Oh, yeah. And all the racism. All the racism. Did you know, I, I mentioned though that, that Facebook group that I'm like kind of a celebrity at this point. I say celebrity, but I'm actually <laughs> notorious. But oh, this one lady thought Lord. I was uh, gender reassigned. Oh, wow. Just, I, I guess because of my name. But then she said it wasn't because of my name. So then I said, well, on what basis do you think I'm gender reassigned? And. She wouldn't answer. I was like, well, what else could it be? I have, see, a, I have a very prominent beard. See, here's what you do. Whenever somebody tries to say that shit, go on YouTube and find a video by a gore grind group called Cattle Decapitation. It's a video called Gender Reassignment Surgery. Just post that. It'll be great. <laughs> I mean... It'll be, it'll, no, trust me, it'll be amazing. I, no, you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and post that to that group. I'm going to just get banned. Fuck it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that gross. Really? I, either that or I'm just going to go ahead and post Earthlings there. Just, <laughs> just the entire movie of Earthlings. Oh, man, I've been having so much fun with that group. But, but yeah, I mean, I don't have an issue with, you know, gender reassignment or whatever. I, I've, I've had some trans friends, but... I wouldn't even really care so much that somebody thinks that I am, but it was just a weird assumption. It was like, you know, Ashley's a Southern gentleman's name and there's literally no other reason. I don't know. It's just weird. Right. Um, absolutely. Yeah. She, she thought I was gender reassigned, which is fine. I, I actually played an April fool's joke on a, on a friend once that I was a, a female to male transgender and, and successfully, made that happen so i was <laughs> so what other ways do you think we could troll that group i mean i want to explore this um, what other ways can we troll these people i'm looking at it right now oh no i feel like we'll betray ourselves too much if we if we openly talk about what kind of stuff we post on there but there's a lot of trolling in a very closed-minded community very oh, stuck yeah. in their ways this is the way i believe in my family has always believed and these are our views and at very bigoted very um not no accepting the change for yeah no progression so these people get really angry <laughs> dude i, w- I want to start posting about the bacon bash on that on that 
page. Like, but, seriously. But why do you keep talking about shit that no one knows of but you? I know about the Bacon Bash. The actually. Bacon Bash. <laughs> that was where that they were reference. torturing wild feral hogs just because. I mean, I realize feral hogs are a problem, but... Do we need to terrorize them, run after them, and stuff them in a goddamn bag, and then barbecue them afterwards? Bo, the joke was that you're vegan. Fuck We don't you. care about your vegan Fuck stories. Fuck all omni. I mean, to be fair, actually. Vegan circle jerk, y'all. I mean, Our slash vegan yeah. circle jerk. Obviously, you're not <laughs> wrong. It is. I do not support abusing animals. Yeah. But- it does look like there's like some animal cruelty going on. Right. So that, that's a good. Oh one. yeah, yeah. No, that that was a goddamn travesty, and Peta is right to stand up to it. No, fuck Peta. Fuck their communications arm that runs their Twitter account, at least. But then again, that's that's some prime trolling if you really get into it. If yeah. you really look at it, it's prime fucking trolling. I don't know. It, it's it's serious trolling, dude. That's what it is. You're trolling. Oh, I'm trolling. trolling. Oh, okay. Did someone really tell you why do you have to use swear words? You wouldn't talk like that to my face. Uh, yes, ma'am, I would. Oh, I will fucking tell you. Someone said this. Read out what I said I in, in, in response. Oh, goodness. I got to fight it. It's going to take a second. Okay. Uh, again, this is an uncensored group. It literally says so in the name. If you don't like swears, you're in the wrong group. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It says uh, uncensored in uncensored. parentheses. No, no. Bastards. Look, look where they, where they, where that person. I thought it was a he, but everyone says, "Ma'am." I don't know. Maybe it's a Carl. I think that's a very masculine <laughs> name. But you know, I'm not here to assume. They can. You know, well, you it's had Carl someone reply. It's Carlina. You had someone. Rep- someone else replied, "I would," and then the uh, that lady came back and said, "I doubt that." And what? then, and then she oh, came back and was like, uh, "I so fucking would." That was Megan. And then you said, why shouldn't I swear? They're just words, man. Who decided that words are bad? Why are they bad? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, but, but, but the best part is where I totally troll them because they go, well, you, you wouldn't say that to my face. You wouldn't say that. Uh, you, you wouldn't say that in front of my mother. You wouldn't say that in a church. Oh, most oh, certainly. Oh, here. You said, I don't care if you swear. This is Facebook. If any crybabies don't like, they could just scroll on by. Remember that and don't listen to Carl here. He's being a Nancy girl. <laughs> I, I call a child a bitch. I call you a bitch in church. And I wow. call your mother a bitch and sleep just fine. That's, That's what, what I, I supposed to. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and then someone commented, That's more like it. Stand up for yourself, but be aware of the situations to be rude and would not. Eh, to. That guy's kind of an asshole. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, like patronizing. Right. Like, Dude, fuck off. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I guess that's it for our collateral gaming extras. Thank you for listening. Um, I don't know why you're listening, but I, I'm sure we've rambled on for uh, over ten minutes. This is hilarious. Listen, they're listening because of collateral cinema. So. Oh, so you're oh. saying you made us? Oh, I saying? don't. Maybe oh. I did. Maybe I made you guys in a fucking laboratory. Yeah, you know what? Whenever, whenever, you know what? I, I, I just pawned them off on your par- I just pawned you guys off on your parents like a year ago. No, fuck well, whenever that. we they hate us because they ain't us. Yeah. Well, oh, honestly, but, really? But whenever we usurp your your director. Uh, position where we're going to become the leaders of collateral and we are going to own it and honestly it's just going to be ash and i we're going to vote you out we're going to vote you out don't don't listen don't listen to these white people here um you're you're being demoted what (laughs) you're white (laughs) you're white you can't say you white people i robert can robert could say you i he's a little brown are you assuming my gender i'm a little brown that would be race. Are you assuming my race? <laughs> what, what's a little brown, Ash? What is a little brown? Like, is that three coats? I think that your we last need name to just is finish. Ortegon, and you're you're slightly dark skinned, okay. but you talk like a white person, and you don't consider yourself Hispanic. Oh wow, this is hmm. going down some very dark. Like a modern. Path. All right, guys. So uh, that's yeah. going to be the end of collateral. No, he's, right. extras. he's not wrong. <laughs> 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 Damn oh, it. God. Well, yeah, collateral cinema, y'all. Yeah, whatever. Collateral cinema. Circle jerk here. Yeah. Collateral cinema is great, actually. Okay. Uh, our slash week is circle jerk. Goodbye, Goodbye. Last week. Collateral gaming is an L Company production. All music and game clips are owned by their respective creators, are used for educational purposes only, and are fair use. Please don't sue us. We're poor. Oh my goodness, this is awful!